Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Wendy, this is Wills Mountain Homestead, and we picked 14 zucchini out of our garden today, and I'm gonna show you different ways to use your zucchini versus you know just shredding it and freezing it, which is always a good option as well. But I'm gonna show you several different ways to use it, eat it as a meal, preserve it, freeze it, and it gives you a lot of versatility to just your basic zucchini. Um, guys, it is drier than heck here in South Central PA. We were supposed to get rain and we did not. It has not rained in a month and everything is completely drying up. We are on a water restriction right now and our grass is completely burnt. We have it mowed in three weeks. Our creek is completely dried up and we're having to start to take our water totes or water buffaloes down to the natural spring that is in the center of town to fill up to be able to water our garden with. So it's a very strange and difficult growing season so I am right there with you. I'll show you a few things right now that is going on that's not normal. I have several acorn squash that need to be harvested. These are ripe and ready to be stored. And you guys, these shouldn't be ready for another month yet, at least month and a half yet. So that's an issue in itself. I'm having some zucchini issues. I think I may have a vine bore in that one that needs pulled which, you know, it does happen. But you guys, look at my poor pumpkins. Like, I have pumpkins right now. Let me see if I can find if it's in this one. Yeah. My pumpkins are ripening already, and they shouldn't ripen until the end of August. My butternut squash are like the size of my fist. It's just this heat, this extreme heat, we're not used to having... 90 plus degree weather for multiple weeks in a row in the month of June and July. So the water we have been providing has kept everything alive, so to speak, but they are struggling. I have one plant that has blossom end rot and you guys that could be due to inconsistent watering. And you know, I have stuff coming to treat that, but and I'm hoping it's just that one plant because I haven't seen it on any of the other ones. But you can just tell, like, look at our yard. It's just, it's all dried up. Everything's dried up. The different ways we're going to use our zucchini, we are going to be making pickles. We are going to grate it and make zucchini bread. We are also going to take those grated zucchinis, dehydrate them, turn them into a powder form to make a flour substitute. We are also going to make zucchini boats for supper. We're also gonna make zucchini fries. We're gonna make zucchini soup. And it's more of like a corn chowder, but I puree it down so it's just soup, like runny soup. And then we're going to do zucchini fritters as well. And you can also make a mock zucchini apple pie filling if you want to. And that's always a fun option to make. It really goes well with oatmeal. We're going to take one of our zucchini and make zucchini boats out of them. And all I did was cut this very large zucchini in half and then cut it in half again and then hollowed out the center. We're gonna put some olive oil on this and some salt and pepper. Bake it at 400 degrees for 15 minutes, just like this to get it nice and softened before we put our filling in. In a medium sized saucepan, I have a half an onion from the garden, about seven cherry tomatoes that have been finely diced and I have larger cherry tomatoes, um, some oregano, and then I have about a cup of rotisserie chicken that was left over and a can of mushrooms. I'm sauteing this just to warm up the filling. And I'm going to add in some half and half to this to give it some liquid and a handful of Parmesan cheese. We're gonna cook this for probably about two minutes before we 
fill our zucchini just to hopefully have that half and half thicken up just a little bit. We're going to put our filling in the zucchini here. Maybe. I have a brick of sharp cheddar cheese. We're gonna grate this and then put it on top of our filled boats. We will place this back in a 400 degree oven for 10 more minutes. This is our finished dinner and we're gonna to top this with some sour cream and cowboy candy. And it is going to be absolutely delicious. I have quite a few zucchini left. So what we're gonna do is shred these and then make a couple recipes out of the basic zucchini shreds. We're gonna do a pizza for supper. We're gonna make some fritters and then zucchini bread. So the fritters we can freeze. We can also freeze the bread and you guys, we just have so much to process still. So let's keep plugging along. In between each full container of zucchini shreds, I place it in a colander. So that way all of the extra moisture will drip out into the drain and it won't be left over in the actual zucchini. To make our zucchini pizza, I have three cups of zucchini in here. And all we're gonna do is sprinkle about a teaspoon of salt in this, mix it up real well with our hands, and then let that sit for a half an hour. Sprinkling this with salt helps to draw that moisture out. And whenever we go to use this, what we'll be doing is squeezing it and releasing all of that excess liquid so that our zucchini is nice and dry. The zucchini has been squeezed and all the moisture has been taken out of it. So to this, we are going to be adding two cups of cheese. I'm using shredded Parmesan. You could use mozzarella as well, but two cups of cheese, four eggs, four tablespoons of flour. Uh, the recipe calls for coconut flour, but I'm using all purpose because I don't have coconut flour. So if you wanted to make it gluten-free, you could always just do coconut flour. And then a teaspoon of either granulated garlic or garlic powder, and a half a teaspoon each of basil and oregano. Go ahead and get in with your hands and get this all mixed up really, 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 really well. Preheat your oven to 400 degrees and using a cookie sheet lined with parchment paper, I usually use like an olive oil spray on this before I go ahead and dump my zucchini mixture onto it. Press this out until it is pretty thin. You don't want it to be super thick in spots. And that's about how much of the tray we're using for this. So it doesn't quite completely fill the whole sheet, but I think it does a pretty good job. This will go into the oven at 400 degrees for about 15 minutes before we go and put any of our toppings on. So you want it to be a nice golden brown in color when you pull it out of the oven. Since we have our oven on already, we're gonna go ahead and take advantage of that and use some of the rest of our shredded zucchini to make zucchini bread. This is my recipe if you wanna screenshot this so you have it. And this tastes more like a cinnamon-ish type bread than it does a traditional zucchini bread. Um, you do have the option to add nuts and chocolate chips to this if you so desire, but we're gonna go ahead and whip some of this up too. And one recipe makes two loaves of bread and this freezes very well too. The timer on our oven just went off and this is what our pizza looks like right now and it looks delicious. So we're gonna go a little non-traditional today because I have rotisserie chicken to use up. So I have roasted garlic, Parmesan, um, Alfredo sauce. So we're gonna use this, the rotisserie chicken and then sprinkle some Parmesan cheese on top. Decrease the oven temperature to 350 degrees. Once you have it all topped in, put it back in the oven for another 10 minutes and then you guys, it'll be done.
this is what our pizza looks like. And I'm going to let it sit for just a minute before I go and cut into it. But you guys, I mean, it's it lifts up, it holds together. It looks great. These are the pans that I'm using to bake my zucchini bread in. And I used olive oil spray to coat the inside. Make sure that you get the corners really well because this bread will stick, especially in the corner areas. So make sure you do a really good job with that. And then we're just gonna take our batter and divide it evenly between the two pans. To cook the zucchini bread, lower the oven temperature to 325 degrees. And I like to bake it for 45 minutes and then come in with a piece of foil and place over top of the loaves so that they don't get too brown. All right, on these top. are fresh out of the oven. I like to let these cool in the pans for just a little bit before I put them on a cooling rack. And like I said before, these freeze very well, whether you wanna freeze them in the entire loaf or cut them into sections, both of it works pretty well. Today, we're gonna to be using one of our zucchini to make a zucchini corn chowder. So to start with, we want a tablespoon of butter in our Dutch oven. We're gonna turn the heat on, get that melted. And then we're gonna first add in probably three slices of bacon. And I chopped this up pretty finely here. And we're gonna let that cook for probably three to four minutes. Once your bacon is crispy, add in one diced onion and two cloves of garlic. Cook that for about three, four minutes until it's all softened. Then add one pound of diced potatoes. If you want to peel your potatoes, that's fine. I just pulled these out of the garden this morning and that's what we are using. And then four to five cups of chicken broth or chicken stock. So we just made this last night. And then we're gonna let this boil for eight to 10 minutes to soften those potatoes. To this, we're going to add in one zucchini that has been diced up, one cup of heavy cream, and then I have a 12 ounce bag of corn that I'm going to dump in here as well. We're going to season this with salt and pepper and we're going to cook this for about 12 minutes. You want this to simmer for 12 minutes. So you have one of two options at this point. You can either put your immersion blender in here and blend all of that up or you can use your blender. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to strain most of this off, put it in my blender and dump it back into the pot. Season it with salt and pepper. And then you guys, it is ready to serve. And I creamed, I tried to cream as much of it together as I could to make this just a pureed type of soup. If you want this to be thicker, you could add some like instant mashed potatoes to it if you wanted to, or add more potatoes at the beginning when you're cooking it. And that does help to thicken up soup in itself. But this will be good to freeze and have for over the fall and winter months. And you guys, today we're having this with grilled cheese sandwiches. Another option to make with your shredded zucchini is a fritter. So in this bowl here, I just have half of a zucchini. And this was a rather large zucchini and I took the seeds out and mixed that with three eggs, some flour, panko, uh, garlic powder, and Parmesan cheese. And then we're just frying these up in patties and some avocado oil. Cook them a couple minutes on each side until they're golden brown and then they'll be ready to serve.